Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 1st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I'll do something a little bit different today and that's uh, covering only one individual topic. On Friday, Andres Freund uh, did uh, publish a mailing list post to the open source security mailing list. And in this post, Andres Freund uh, did explain his work in discovering a backdoor in the popular XC util package. XC Utils includes a popular compression library and utilities to use this library. The backdoor itself was actually in the compression library. And then, of course, potentially by running the tools, you could start the backdoor. But that's not actually how it works. This backdoor specifically targets System D. System D is used to launch various daemons. And the way the backdoor works is that essentially it waits for connections to the SSH daemon. And no, it's not one of those simple, hey, you connect with the right key and you are logged in. It's a bit more complex in that it looks for the right key, but then actually executes code that is being sent by the user. So the user actually never logs in. So again, version 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 are affected. Luckily, these versions were released relatively recently. So for the few versions that are affected, like for example, Arch Linux and Kali Linux, they're only affected if you update it within approximately the last week. You're also not affected if you are running on a processor other than x86-64, so all your Raspberry Pi users are not affected. And in Mac OS, if you are using Homebrew to install packages, you may have received the backdoor version last uh, week, but this particular backdoor was actually not included based on how this particular version was created. And with that, uh, let's talk a little bit about the history and sort of uh, what we currently know about what exactly happened. And of course, this is still a very much developing story. The reason Andres Freund actually discovered the backdoor was that he noted that the connections to his ZH daemon on a system, well, it just took a long time to log in. And that's sort of one side effect. There were also error messages that occasionally showed up. The 5.6.0 version had some problems that were then actually addressed by the attacker in 5.6.1. This is a sophisticated attack, and I'm not usually a person who uses this term sort of lightheartedly, and actually often complain when people use the term, but uh, this was planned sort of for quite a while. The accounts that were created in order uh, to then deliver and uh, send a pull request with the backdoor were created in 2021. In 2022, the particular account here Jai Tan, if I pronounce this correctly, uh, started committing changes to the XC project. There were, for example, initially some changes made to disable some tests that uh, later helped to prevent the backdoor from being discovered. Also, after the backdoor was actually then committed and accepted by the XC process project, several other accounts that are likely related to the original committer did, for example, post to Debian mailing lists in order to convince them to upgrade the version that is delivered with Debian. That luckily never quite happened. Some of the development versions had it included, but the actual stable version of Debian never included this backdoored version. To activate the backdoor, the attacker will need a specific key. This key is currently not known and likely will not be known unless uh, the attacker sort of publishes it. So there is little risk right now for random people abusing this particular backdoor. 
On the other hand, this also makes it difficult to just scan your network and figure out if your version of SSHD uses the backdoored library. To check if you're vulnerable, you have to make sure that you do not have libLCMA 5.6 installed. So 5.6.0, 5.6.1 are the two versions that have been released. The actual GitHub repository is no longer reachable. So no real chance that additional installs are happening right now. And if you are vulnerable, it's probably because you upgraded the last uh, couple weeks. So check your favorite package manager to see what version of the libLCMA5 package you have installed. It's not usually the XE utils package that installs this library, even though they should be in sync. They should use the same version number. As an additional check, uh, maybe double check to make sure that you don't have any odd software that installed its own copy of libLCMA5. But on the other hand, given the short time frame. Don't really think uh, that's a huge concern. In a tweet, I suggested just running XZ space dash capital V. That'll give you the version of the uh, XC binary as well as uh, the LZMA library that it's loaded. A couple of people commented, and probably rightfully so, that you probably shouldn't just run a known backdoor to like this. But again, remember, this actually doesn't trigger the backdoor. It's only triggered if it's then being loaded uh, into SSH via systemd. So uh, quite complex malware here, but definitely checking the packages uh, certainly makes a lot more sense. You'll find a couple of simple shell scripts that people have published to check if you're vulnerable. So that's certainly an option, but you know, I think that's obvious uh, given the context here. Uh, make sure what you're running when you're running uh, these shell scripts. Well, that's it for today. I will try to add uh, many of the resources uh, to the show notes. I'm considering a webcast maybe on Tuesday, Wednesday, but uh, haven't quite figured out if that's necessary or not. Let me know if you're interested in particular, you know, depending on how Boyan's reverse analysis goes, uh, that may be sort of something interesting uh, to walk through because there are a bunch of real neat and sophisticated anti-reversing tricks that are being used by this particular backdoor. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.